Mayor Staff is ready when you are. Good afternoon, everyone. The Sacramento City Council will please come to order. Would the clerk call the roll, please, to establish a quorum? Thank you. Vice Mayor Ashby is expected momentarily. Councilmember Lalowy is expected momentarily. Councilmember Harris? Here. Councilmember Valenzuela? Here. Councilmember Chenier? I'm expected momentarily. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Guetta? Here. Councilmember Jennings? I am here, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Vang? Here. And Mayor Steinberg? I am here. Um, thank you. Would everyone please rise? Um, I will lead us in the land acknowledgement today, as well as the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise for the opening acknowledgement in honor of Sacramento's indigenous people and tribal lands. To the original people of this land, the Nisanan people, the Southern Maidu, Valley and Plains Miwok, Putwin Wintun peoples, and the people of the Wilton Rancheria, Sacramento's only federally recognized tribe. May we acknowledge and honor the native people who came before us and still walk beside us today on these ancestral lands by choosing to gather today in the active practice of acknowledgement and appreciation for Sacramento's indigenous people's history, contributions, and lives. Thank you, and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, members, um, we have uh, one item today. It is a very important item on our discussion calendar, and it is the Sacramento Police Review Commission's 2020 recommendations. Um, I believe that we have, um, obviously we have our police chief here, Kathy Lester, I, I, uh, Assistant City Manager Conlon, um, Deputy Police Chief Norm Leong, and I'm just looking who else I see here. We also have uh, leader, our, our leadership of the, uh, uh, of the Police Review Commission uh, itself. Who would like to begin here? I know I wanna ensure that the Police Commission leadership has an opportunity to make a brief presentation themselves uh, in, in whatever order. Madam Chief? If, if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Yes, sir. Yes, yep. go ahead. Thank you, Chris Conlon, Assistant City Manager for Public Safety. I'll, uh, I'll provide some brief context and then I'm gonna ask the chair for the uh, commission to speak and then we'll go ahead and guide you through the various recommendations. So back in April 13th of 2021, the commission submitted their 2020 recommendations to this council for review and consideration. On the 1st of June in 2021, the police department provided you an oral report in response to the commission's recommendations, and they identified which of those items they had already resolved with changes to policy or practice. On the same date, the council passed a motion that approved the commission's specific 2020 recommendation to change the department's use of force policy. Um, on the same time, the council uh, made a determination that these recommendations that came up, the 2020 recommendations that had not already been addressed by police or by your action on the use of force would come forward incrementally so that the council would have an opportunity to make decisions on them. Um, the first group of those came forward on August 24, 2021. There was a continuation until October and then a subsequent continuation again on October 19th until now. Um, and the reason for those continuations was that there was also a pending audit on the commission and the council wanted to have the benefit of hearing the audit first before making determinations on those recommendations. On the 22nd of February of this year, the council approved the auditor's report. The report outlined uh, recommendations in three areas, and that was clarifying roles and responsibilities, investment in the commission, and then strengthening the recommendation process. The seven recommendations that you're going to see today come from the commission's 2020 recommendations, but they correspond to these three study areas in the audit with the intention of trying to address some of the audit's findings 
uh, by your guidance on these particular recommendations. Um, I'm gonna walk you through those recommendations. We'll go one by one and there's staff analysis included along with of those. But first what I'd like to do is allow the uh, police commission chair, uh, Ms. Graciela Castilla Trings to talk to you right now and, uh, and give you her thoughts. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and council members. My name is Graciela Castillo Krings. I am the new chair of the Sacramento Community Police Review Commission. And I want to begin by thanking the mayor and the city council for working closely with the commission to reach this point. There is still a lot of work to be done, but the commission cannot do it alone. Transformative change requires partnership with each one of you, the community and the police department. Adopting these recommendations today will continue to build accountability, transparency, and trust, and continue to build a partnership with the commission. And we look forward to working with you closely. Our previous chair, Mario Guerrero, has spent countless hours working with the mayor, with the auditor, and is here today to help answer questions that the council may have regarding the recommendations. We really appreciate the time that the council is taking to consider these seven items, and we appreciate uh, the continued partnership. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Conlon, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just uh, whatever comments you might have, and then well, we can get into the list. I, I want to, first of all, um, thank uh, the commission and the commission leadership. Um, Ms. Castillo-Krings, thank you for assuming the mantle, and Mario Guerrero for um, your high levels of patience as the city and all of its and, and in all of its parts attempts to ensure that we set up a process where your recommendations are heard in a timely way and are meaningful and are strongly considered. And the audit helped us. Uh, and I think that we, uh, you know, can use these sets of recommendations to, to move forward. I also want to thank Chief Lester who, um, and her team, who I know the chief herself personally, before she became chief, was a, uh, a consistent and helpful presence at, at the meetings. And, um, you know, uh, we continue the good and we restart that which needs to be all, uh, all improved and fixed. And I hope, you know, again, today in real time is a way we can start doing that. So, um, well, I'd like us to go through these one by one and have uh, and have them described. I think we'll go through all seven of them first, open it up for public testimony, and then we'll have council discussion. The council can can pick one or more of them, of course, and then a motion um, on uh, the entire package or parts of the package, depending on what the council's will is. So why don't somebody from the team and it can well i want to uh, uh whether it's the commission itself or the chief or mr conlin describe the seven recommendations please okay mr mayor I'd, hopefully you're all seeing my screen right now and you should see at least the beginning of the seven re uh, recommendations and this corresponds directly to the council report that you should have uh with you um so the first, and I would also uh, like to let you know that we do have staff available. Obviously, Chief Lester is on, and then she has her team, Lieutenant Greg Galliano and Captain Marnie Stigertz. And then uh, we've invited OPSA to be available. The city auditor here is here. Um, HR can respond, and obviously your city attorney is here if you have questions. You'll notice that each one of these recommendations uh, is followed by a uh, analysis and response from uh, SPD, the city attorney, OPSA, and uh, HR labor relations. Let's start with the first one, and that's uh, for additional staff support needed for the police commission. Uh, police commission needs additional staff support. Uh, the commission is currently staffed by Office of Public Safety Accountability but uh, OPSA has extremely limited staff and its own workload. It must complete at a minimum. OPSA should be authorized to hire another person to help fully staff the commission. And you see that uh, essentially 
the only comment is from OPSA, who has stated that the city clerk's office has been authorized funding for additional staff to support the commission, um, and that OPSA has requested additional FDs to perform office duties and responsibilities. Are there any questions on that one before we take off the next one? Well, this is a core issue, of course, that the council, I think, needs to resolve firmly, if not today, uh, in the days and weeks ahead. Because the city charter, as I remember, and does say that OPSA will staff the commission. And yet, I know I've stated my clear belief that I think the commission should have its own uh, full-time uh, person uh, with some subject matter expertise to staff the commission. Because no matter who's in what seats, so long as we are sort of conflating these separate entities, which is OPSA, the police commission, and then of course the entire city side, which has many, <laughs> many parts to it, that we're going to have the same frustrations that we've had over these last couple of years. Um, and so, yes, additional staff. But I don't. I think it should. The commission should have its own staff, its own executive officer, um, who works for the city, uh, but is the, the trusted uh, go-between, so to speak, uh, to make sure the commission gets what it needs timely and that. Uh, this process is working much more smoothly. It's my point of view. Okay, Jeff, you want to talk on this one? Yeah, just briefly, Mayor. Go ahead. I agree with you partly, but maybe not wholly, in that it depends on the entire workload of the Office of Public Safety Accountability, whether or not the commission needs a full-time FTE. I am not convinced at this point that they need full-time, but they certainly need more attention than they're getting. I, th I think that it would warrant a conversation with uh, Dr. Watson about what her needs are to fully, uh, to fully appreciate the duties that she has to uh, work out and the needs of the commission from her point of view and perhaps from SPD. But as, as I understand it, there is a vacancy in OPSA currently. So they seem to be understaffed, uh, but I think it warrants a conversation. But generally I agree with you that we definitely need to work out the staffing issue here. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, Councilman Harris. All right, um, let's go to number two, please. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it looks like you had a comment from Mr. Lilloy and- Oh, I'm sorry, I did, I did not see. Chair Castillo. Mr. Lilloy, go ahead, please. Councilman Lilloy? Can't hear you, sir. Let's go to Council Member Jennings, then we'll come back to you. I'm, I'm sorry, there may, there may be some technology difficulty. Council Member Jennings? So um, I, I guess I just want to be clear on um, the responsibilities of the additional staff support. I don't want to put it under the the umbrella of additional staff support. Um, so I was just wondering um, a little bit more about job description, responsibilities included in that full-time, part-time, contracted, employee. Just wanted to know, are all those questions answered? Yeah, we haven't, you know, uh, made a specific proposal, but I, I, what I'm suggesting is we got to get to that quickly. I'm happy to make it, not today, but in the days ahead, because, uh, and maybe as part of the budget process for the coming year, that we clarify this as a matter of budget and manager of policy. And, you know, there may be a vacant FTE or two uh, around, uh, may not need a new a new position. Um, and I'm open half time, part time. I don't know. I just know there needs to be dedicated staff with some expertise. Yeah. And, and the only reason when I look at 
uh, OPSA's response is they've requested additional FGEs to perform office duties and responsibilities. I don't know if that's within their own shop or if that's within um, the shop of, of this, the, this organization and, the, and their request. So if it includes their request, then they have a copy of the responsibilities that they would like to respond, like that they, they would like to request for. So I'm just, that's where I'm kind of missing what, what is actually needed other than just under the umbrella of additional staff support. That's it. I mean, there, it, there's and there's role confusion too. I don't think we want to get into the, all the, I think maybe we should leave it at that for now, just because it, it, um, it involves OPSA as well. And, uh, um, I think it might be more appropriate for a, a, another another venue. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Lilloey. Can you hear me now, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Great, thank you so much. Um, I think uh, Council Member uh, Jennings kind of pointed out what I was gonna ask. If we can get a better understanding of where the staffing is needed and what is the, the amount of work that is being submitted to OPSA that you know, we can kind of uh, have some kind of a metric to see at what point we <laughs> at staff and at what point we don't need to. So um, I like your idea that we probably best to come back to this so we can uh, discuss it a little bit more in detail. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, let's now move to- Mr. Uh, Mayor? Yes, I'm sorry. If, hi, no, I apologize. If I may, this is um, Graciela Castillo-Krings again. And I, and I appreciate the questions that the council members are bringing up. And just to give an example, especially COVID has made it really difficult for the commission to do the principal job, which is reaching out to the community. So just an example of things that I think where we would really appreciate some help and director Watson and her staff have been great, but as we all know with resources being limited at, at the city, it sometimes makes it challenging. So a couple of things, for example, that the commission would like to see we currently do not have an like uh, an entire list of community organizations that we can do outreach to to ensure that we're working with them closely when it comes to setting up meetings with the council members we don't have anybody to do that we basically have to do that on our on our own and as volunteers that becomes a little challenging one of the one of the problems that we have heard from the council is sometimes how we format our actual documents and the type of information that is given to the council has not been adequate that is something that the audit raised and we would like to see that addressed but again that becomes a bit of a challenge when we don't have any resources and all of us are, are trying to do our best job that we can but we are volunteers and so having a professional staff at the city that understands the city process understands how the documents should be formatted and, and the type of research that is required to ensure that when information goes to the council it is done in a way that is not just professionalized but standardized i think would go a long way and as we are starting to open up one of the main things that we have been impacted is going out and actually outreaching to community and partnering up with the police department when they do community work some sometimes that information is hard to get again when we're just doing it as a volunteer so one of the things that i think we've been talking with the police department is how do we create a better partnership and i think some of that would be alleviated as well by having additional resources that we currently do not have and so really appreciate you taking that into consideration again we don't have certain just basic information that i think if we had a staff person or even a half PY, that would be really helpful and appreciate you taking those these comments into consideration. Thank you so much. Jake, did come um, Mayor, if I could. Yeah, Kate, yeah, Kate, Kate, Kate really Shanir. <laughs> Thank you. Just wanted to give, I think, some clear direction of what would help me, which would be going off of the chair's comments, a job description um, that we could bring back with an estimate of hours, because I do see how there could be overlap with a person who's 50% time has been staffing the commission, 50% time might be helping OPSA with community engagement, right? Because that's something that could help. Like there's a role here that I think is being articulated that OPSA and the commission could work together to define that could help OPSA with their workload, but could also help the commission with theirs. Things like it's tracking the implementation of recommendations. Some of the things that are in here, I really do think it might be more than half time, but I would like to provide the direction today rather than just talking about it and saying, let's keep talking about it for OPSA 
Tulsa to work with the commission to bring back a proposed job description and hours need for commissions at time, if that makes sense. Well, for the for, to staff the commission independently, is that your is that your motion? Well, I'm not making a motion because I don't believe we're allowed to take action on this. I know I think it's just providing right. guidance. I think Correct. it would be helpful for me to see this enumerated a little bit more specifically, the specific tasks that the commission needs help with about how many hours they're thinking that task, those tasks would encompass and maybe some feedback from OPSA about how, whether that would be something that could fit into their current staffing needs, if that would address the needs that Director Watson has identified, or if that's a separate position, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, that's fine. I mean, that's consistent. Yeah, I think we got to get that back within the next couple of weeks. All right. Um, I got Council Member Chenier. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, this is quick, and it, it's basically an add on. What I heard from you, Mr. Mayor, and what I heard from um, Ms. Castillo Krings really were three different types of positions. Um, there was an administrative position, there was doing community outreach. And Mayor, you talked a little bit about content expertise. So uh, if, if I can, um, with Ms. Valenzuela's direction, to just say, we really need to look at the tasks that need to be done, um, because it may not be a job description, is what I'm saying. It may be pieces that we can do other things with. And that would be then a discussion, I think, at the city manager's level. But I, I think the direction should be like, what are the jobs that need to be done, not a job description for an individual? Because there, there's different pieces of this puzzle. No, that's fair. That's fine. That makes sense. Okay. Very good. Is there anybody out? Councilman Harris, one more on this one? Yeah, Mayor, um, it looks like Councilmember Guerra was up before me. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Councilman Guerra, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, uh, I agree with uh, with the comments about uh, the, the job description. The only thing I would suggest here is uh, that it come back through the budget process. And so that I don't know if, if we need to spend another uh, council meeting here with the full council, you know, uh, nitpicking at a job description. So I think if it came back through the, uh, the budget process in uh, the budget committee and then coming to us at the council, I think for those council members who have an interest in this specifically, we can engage with the city manager's office and OPSA on the description. Uh, personally, for me, just the, uh, uh, the the amount of time that's involved, particularly with the outreach, I do see a full need for it. But uh, I think uh, uh, delineating that through the budget process is going to identify what are the overall needs for that. So that's my only recommendation uh, versus spending another council meeting um, debating over a, uh, a resume or job description here. Okay, we'll, we'll figure out process-wise how we can make the consideration of the job description most, most efficient. I think that's a good point. All right, Councilman Harris? Yeah, just briefly, Mayor. Uh, OPSA was given three FTE in November of 2016 to handle its ex ex uh, expanded responsibilities. And that is also on page 12 of the February 22 auditor's report. You know, this is a discussion we need to have I, I, you know, just to delineate the responsibilities and the FTE needed to discharge those duties. So I think that we can handle this relatively easily with a discussion amongst council. And I would look forward to that perhaps next week. Uh, just saying that uh, I don't think this is a tough night not to untie, uh, but it does require just a little bit of discussion. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's now move on to number two. Thank you, sir. Uh, so this one refers to uh, how the year, uh, the uh, recommendations that are provided every year are handled. So it's a process discussion. Um, and it talks about how the commission's effectiveness can be increased by building a collaborative working relationship with the police department. Once recommendations are shared with the city council and the police department at the end of the year, as the police department should report to the commission on the status of those recommendations. Uh, the commission recognizes some of the recommendations will require the city to amend statutes or provide resources for the police department to comply. However, some recommendations might be accomplished through administrative changes. To that end, the police department should communicate to the commission on each recommendation pertaining to the police department if it was adopted, if, uh, if it will be adopted, 
and a timeline for adoption for the reason preventing adoption. So um, the only comment was from the police department who uh, mentioned the fact that they routinely provide updates to the commission. Uh, quite often that's during the commission meetings. Um, the commission reports to the mayor and council. We've been discussing that here and makes recommendations to the mayor and council. It's ultimately up to the mayor and council to adopt those recommendations and provide direction to the city manager as we're doing today. Uh, police department reports to the city manager, not directly to the commission. Um, and that the police department does regularly adopt many of the commission's recommendations outside of formal process. And they usually update the council on that. Um, now the city auditor also had some comments on this in their audit and it was on process improvement for how those recommendations would be formatted to allow uh, a better, cleaner process as they came before the council for decision making. Mayor, if I can. Yeah, go ahead. I am, um, because we're talking about this obviously in broader context through the PMPE and under Chair Ashby's leadership in that space. I think in general, having some sort of standing annual report has been sort of what we've talked about, that we're talking about the progress the city has made, because the whole point of having these citizens bodies is they're providing us recommendations and we want to be able to tell the community what, what's been happening with those recommendations. So I would probably defer this to that conversation and sort of the format. Um, I don't know, Chair Ashby, I know you're on the call, um, or Vice Mayor uh, Ashby, if you'd like to chime in on that. But I do think this is really important because we want to show the community. I do, I, I agree with what the police department saying in the context of some of these things are being implemented, they're already implemented. Um, and I don't know how much more work it would be for us to create a system to track that in sort of either in an annual way or some sort of format. So um, we'd love Vice Mayor Ashby, I don't know if you want to chime in on, on that in terms of structure for our committees in general and how do we record and track our progress on their recommendations. Mayor, you okay? Yes, please, please, please. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, Council Member Valenzuela is right. This is something that she knows well. The uh, PMP committee has been taking up over the last couple of months, maybe maybe six months or so since the mayor requested that we do so. And uh, we are coming forward with a policy. Actually, we've already passed it through um, PMPE. It is just going through our own internal city of Sacramento system now through the lawyer's office and, and uh, city, city manager's office and all of that to make sure that we yeah, you know, have uh, crossed all of our T's and dotted all of our I's, but it does incorporate, as she has eloquently stated already, a report back system that gives each of these committees and commissions a, a real voice and a timeline and some control of their own destiny around what they'd like to look at and then make requests of the council and then annually the council can review that and the PMPE committee would be able to chime in on whether like if it's something controversial we probably would put it on the council agenda if it's fairly status quo and remains the same as it has been in years past we would probably put it on the consent or that would be our recommendation obviously mayor and city manager could make a different decision about where to place it on the agenda, but the recommendation of the PMP chair would probably be based primarily on whether or not it's a change in what's being asked from that committee. And it does include, and this is for all committees and commissions, it's not specific just to this one. It does include stated goals. It does include areas of deficiency. So for example, where they might need more staffing or they might need more time or they might need more outreach or whatever it might be for the various groups, it varies over time. And it allows them a process to not only present in writing to the counts to the PMPE committee, it also identifies for them a specific staff person who is associated with that report coming to not only PMPE, but to city council. And then they do get a, a full presentation. Every committee and commission will get a full presentation in front of PMPE. And then the ones where it's required would get one also or a recommendation to one also in front of the council. So Councilmember Valenzuela, am I missing any piece of that or is that what you were hoping I would go over? 
That's what I was hoping you'd go over. Thank you, <laughs> Chair Ashby. And I think um, as well with recommendation, and I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit to recommendation four when it talks about um, voting on recommendations within a certain amount of time. I think this is something, again, it's just best practice for every commission that there be a process where they have something they're trying to say to us and there's a clear system for how those get reported, what the committees do and how it gets on the council agenda. And so I do think that two and four in this case are being addressed through those broader changes that the chair just enumerated at PMPE. So just want to put that out for my colleagues who don't sit on PMPE with myself, the chair, Councilmember Harris, and Councilmember Maloney. I do think, Mayor, that the process allows both some continuity for all committees and commissions to have consistency, but also allows enough individuality for the vast variety of topics that uh, we appoint folks to on these various committees and commissions. So I look forward to the council having an opportunity to wait. Good. And when again is that going to come forward? That's a Madam Clerk question because uh, the electeds have done our part. It is running its way through staff. So maybe if Mindy's on there, she could chime in and let us know when, when staff will be prepared to put that on the agenda. Madam Clerk, let's give the public and the members some expectation here when we can hear this, because this is really important. This, this will maybe cure all, nothing is a cure all, but it will it, you know, be a consistent process for all the commissions, which... I think will be real help to the commissioners, to the staff, to the to the members. Well, I think in general too, because I mean, we've recently received letters from our disability advisory commission, right? And so, I mean, this is not the only space where we've had commissioners come forward and say, we're not sure how to get this on your radar, but here you go. Um, I will also say, since I missed on item five as well here, when we talk about SAC PD responding, something that I felt was super important in this process that the chair just enumerated was to make sure that whatever responsible department the recommendation pertained to had a chance to respond to that commission so that what came to the PMPE and then the council had that feedback loop. Um, so maybe there was a concern that was raised that's being worked on. Maybe there's a, something that they're already doing. Maybe there's something that isn't their responsibility and that we need to direct at somebody else. But I think that iterative loop at the commission level is, is super important to ensuring what we get by the time it gets to council has had the benefit of that feedback loop from the city team before they say, hey, council, we want you to do you know X, Y, Z, if that makes sense. So that, as I would say, that recommendation five is also going to be somewhat encompassed in that process as well, unless my colleagues disagree. Um, if I may, just on that, uh, Council yeah. Member, the question is, you know, I think the initial recommendation from the board was something like 70 items. So the question comes, does the police department have the manpower and the time to respond to 70 items all at once. Um, I don't think they do because it's just not realistic. So, you know, having a, a, a police, having police department responding to, to the, the commission, I think it's very important. But at the same time, I think the commission needs to understand too that you can't just drop 70 comments and expect to hear it back within a week. That's fair, Councilor. And I would just gui guideline that you know, these are, this is a process and ultimately whatever the commission has thought of, unless it goes through the police department and we get a feedback from them, I don't think us as a council would be ever take the position that we can just simply vote on it without the police's input on those uh, recommendations. Well, and I will say, Council Member, that I think that feedback is, is important and it kind of relates back to the Commission's other ideas around having liaisons present at all of the meetings because these are this is a volunteer commission, right? So they're kind of moving already at a pace of that volunteer residents can do. Um, and so if SAC PD is present at their meetings, then it doesn't need to be a whole onslaught all at once. It could be, hey, you're talking about this, let's circle back. And really a discussion is really, I think, what folks are hoping for at that commission level. So that what bubbles up might not be 70 recommendations because they've gotten answers to some of their questions. It might be more impactful because they've had that discussion at that level. And I agree yeah. with you 100%. As, as long as sometime in the future, if the PD comes and says we're, we're shorthanded, that as a council, we'd be able to support them on their hiring needs, then we can demand um, events like this because we have actually try to fill up, uh, fulfill their, their requirements. So um, I think it has to be a joint venture between the council, PD, 
to make sure we have that liaison at uh, at these commissions all the time. Mayor, if I may, for just a moment. Please. I have texted the clerk because I had a sneaking suspicion she might have been pulled away from her duties here by somebody, and uh, she was. So she is checking for us on what the planned timeline is for that to come back, and I know she'll chime in here in just a moment. And, you know, to my colleague, Councilmember Lolowi, I think in fairness, not, not just sometimes, you know, it's easier to pick on a, a different committee or commission, like I always choose the animal group, right, because it... <laughs> There are so many of them, and you're right. They, there's no way that we could take in, you should see the letters that Councilman Valenzuela and I got for the recommendations for that committee and commission. They do have to be reviewed by staff. So our process in the annual work plan process and in the annual report of a work plan process, there is a staff person for each committee or commission assigned to kind of walk through those and figure out which ones are even in the city purview or possible for us or relevant. And there may be some that the committee or commission wants that maybe staff doesn't. They'll still be outlined in there, but they will have input from staff for the council to weigh in on and PMP will have weighed in as well before the general council takes a whole look. So hopefully this work plan concept with more eyes and more help will really drive a process because you can see what you're seeing in front of you is a very frustrated committee because they didn't always know who to go to. And there wasn't a person in the police department directly assigned. And the person in OPSA's office has changed, by the way, over time, but also had one idea of what their role would be. And Potentially council members had a different idea and the committee had a different idea. So the goal here is with all of these in committees and commissions to solidify who's responsible for reporting back to the council and who's responsible for walking through those anywhere from seven to 70 recommendations that they've worked on based on their work plan. And also us forming a work plan annually should help also focus these committees and commissions on whatever the mayor or the administration at the time wants to be working. So that way you have these committees and commissions really supporting a narrative of the administration. That's the goal. Thank you. And uh, thank, thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, this is Mindy Cuppy, City Clerk. And to answer the question, we are bringing boards and commissions in general, the city code chapter 2.40. Um, it's right now with the city attorneys in the dork process um, at the end of this month. So it will then go to Law and Ledge, and then we'll be bringing that to council. And that will be partnered with the process for commissions to report to the city council through PNPE. Can you please tell the public again what the dork process is? And I'm not taking it personally. <laughs> Thank go you. Um, I'm going to ask our city attorney to weigh in on that process. Oh, just what just, I, I think it's the basically know what, it, what it stands for and what it is. Uh, yes, Mayor. It's uh... <laughs> it's, called the, it, it's the acronym for the city attorney's draft ordinance review commission where we get all our senior attorneys most experienced with ordinance drafting to review it and make sure that it's constitutionally sound and, and complies with all the law. And we do expect to have that done and back so the council can keep on the vice mayor's uh, calendar to us, which was mid-April for it to come to council. Okay, well, that's mayor, good. I should, I should note that PMP has the best attorney in the city attorney's office. And so while it may take us a little bit of time, uh, she's amazing. And what we're gonna get is tremendous work product. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. City has a term called dork. It's good, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, um, Chair Guerrero, did you have a comment on this, uh, on item two? Yes, Mayor, uh, if I may, thank you so much for uh, I, I believe that my colleague, um, newly elected uh, chair Castillo Cranes has stepped aside. And so I'm stepping in, just wanted to, uh, you know, share the following, uh, you know, all of these recommendations in particular, this one is about setting expectations, um, clarifying roles and responsibilities. And I think what this one really is about is claiming the early wins that I think um, in the April meeting of um, of uh, last year, uh, the council looked at many recommendations, including this one. And this really was about claiming those early wins where the commission um, has put forward a recommendation and SAC PD has actually taken, um, uh, made some kind of substantive change. Um, I'll give an example. Uh, recently, this past year, we worked on 
uh, the commission had a broad recommendation that SACPD should adopt a uh, policy on how uh, peace officers interact with transgender and gender nonconforming uh, people. And so we know now that they've adopted a general order in this regard and that they've adopted many of the recommendations that uh, the, the more specific re recommendations within that policy. And so it is important that if in the future we ask uh, a question such a, to SAC PD, such as, hey, did you uh, end up adopting some kind of version or uh, move on this recommendation? And they say yes that we standardize that response so that we um, can share that publicly with the community. We can share that publicly with the city council and everyone can say, yes, we've made progress. We agreed on something. Um, and so this one, this recommendation is not about the times where uh, there's disagreement and a recommendation needs to move to the city council for you know, an up or down vote or consideration. This one really is about setting the expectations that we will communicate with each other and that when we have wins, we can proudly say to the community, we've uh, made this uh, change together. So I just wanted to, to add that context and take a moment to just thank uh, uh, SAC PD and Chief Lester. I think that uh, with her leadership, I, I, I in particular have seen a huge change in the way that we work and I've seen a lot of progress on a number of items. So I just wanted to add that context. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Chief Lester. Hey, thank you, um, Mayor, and thank you, Mario. Really appreciate the uh, kind words. I just want to comment on it because I agree with uh, Mario and on this item. One of the recommendations that came uh, forward from the city auditor's report was to have essentially like a formal process in this where we had just a form that we would use. A lot of cities use that. I really am in support of that because the Commission could essentially make a recommendation that would then come to the police department, we could adopt, we could modify, we could respond back, and then there would be one, a historical document of that, but we could also publish that on our website and share that with the community. Um, and I think that and I appreciate um, the recognition, so thank you Mario and thank you Graciela as well, for when we do have points of agreement, and there are many um, that we can share those publicly, we just haven't really had any means to do that. And when the city auditor had made that recommendation, I thought that was a great idea. So I just wanted to say that we're in support of that. And I think that might also help on the council end because we can um, address a lot of the recommendations outside of the formal council process and make progress. So thank you for hearing me out. Very good. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor? Councilman Geta, yes. Yeah. So I, I wanted to highlight that uh, as well at, at the budget and audit committee, we discussed that. I understand we are trying to find ways to uh, you know, uh, create a standard format for all our uh, boards and commissions um, and even our committees. But I, I do think that specifically, uh, both as Chief Lester has mentioned and um, you know, Pastor Chair Guerrero mentioned, that this would really help uh, move forward the, uh, the, the work of the, of the Citizens uh, Police Review Commission. And not only that, but uh, at least help, at least at the council office level, kind of you know, follow up on when we get calls from constituents on what, where things are at. This is a good way of tracking it and finding out where the status of, of each issue is and where it's going. So I, I would just echo my support. This is one where the, both the department and the commission are in agreement and would support uh, moving forward in, in, uh, in that recommendation as well. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to number three. Give me one second to make my little wonky screen work. Okay. Okay, everybody should see the screen again. Um, this one's easy, actually. It's an example of what we were just talking about. So on uh, number three, minimum once a year meeting between the commission and the police chief, require that the police chief or their representative meet with the, co the commission at a minimum once a year prior to submission of the annual report to the city council to provide feedback about its recommendations. Uh, only comment is from the police department who said this recommendation has been adopted that the uh, SPD liaison meets throughout the year with the commission members outside of the regular meeting schedule. And the liaison has met with the commission prior to as well as after the commission has adopted annual recommendations for consideration. And just by the way, the new uh, liaison is Lieutenant Greg Galliano. 
and uh, he is backed up by Captain uh, Marty Sigurds, and uh, they are at the commission meetings unless there is an operational or overriding personal requirement that won't allow them. Any questions on this one? I'm back. I'm back. Sorry. Uh, do we have anybody uh, up on this? I don't see anybody. Okay, let's move to number four, please. Sounds good. Okay, number four. Uh, council should vote uh, on commission recommendations within three months. Uh, commissioners serve on a voluntary basis and are tasked with providing recommendations to the manager, mayor and city council, but there's no requirement for the city council to take any action. The city council should adopt the process or policy that requires the body to vote on the recommendations received from the council no later than uh, from the commission no later than three months from receipt. Um, the only comment on this uh, is from HR, who just wants to stress the fact that any challenge changes the policies regarding wage hours or working conditions would have to go through the bargaining process. Um, and if you need to talk to HR, we can get them on here as well. Any questions on this one before discussion? Yeah, it, it seems to me too that, um, Chris, on this one, things may have to go through uh, legal. There are other departments that could be involved and that might slow up the process. So I, I don't know how you make allowance for that. I will say that I think, um, and I hope, I, I know the PMPE process, um, and colleagues correct me if I'm wrong on the committee, doesn't outline a specific time frame, but the goal was to be super clear on the process because it will sometimes take longer um, and maybe there's more of an iterative process, but the goal is to ensure that there's clear accountability for recommendations moving through that process. Um, so I'll just add that. And I think this kind of falls under that bucket of PMPE creating a process that we will vote on um, soon to sort of formalize how this works when a commission has a recommendation in general. Council Member Valenzuela, I think I hear you talking about the work plan process that's being developed. Yes. Okay. So I think once that work plan process is developed and presented to the council, then we'll know whether or not three months is realistic and we can adjust accordingly and then report back to them what that time frame should look like as opposed to the three months that they've mentioned here. I don't know if that was just an arbitrary number or whether it's one that they felt uh, they needed to put in the report. But I think the work plan process will inform us as to what the time frame or range time range should be for a response. Absolutely. Okay. Eric, Councilman Guetta, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you. Uh, you wanna, I'd like to put in a couple things in context one. I think this is one also where it's why it's critical to have the appropriate staffing for this committee. Um, and, uh, and, and the reason is, is that if you think about any one of our commissions that, uh, or committees, you have a staff person who's working through all of the, the questions and issues that are going to come before council. Uh, you know, in any of our other committees that we're moving through an item that comes to a commission, you, we don't wait three months sometimes to get something to council for an action. That's because we've had the staff and the department working in tandem with that citizen body. So um, I think the combination of the, the, the appropriate staffing with also uh, the previous recommendation of the, the, the formulation of, of how the process and work is moving forward, those work in tandem to be able to get uh, to, to, to Council Member Jennings' point, maybe three months isn't that right number, but, but it should be pretty close because you know, it shouldn't take six months for something <laughs> for that, that has been reviewed by both the department the commission and the staff to be able to get to the council. So uh, I just wanted to put that in context that uh, I don't I don't know if it's if it's unreasonable, but the the staffing and with the prior recommendation here that nobody objected to uh, gets us to uh, you know, a much faster process for when an item is an action for the council. There might be recommendations that are under the state purview, and we'll know that because at the staff level, but at least for those that we can act on. That should give us the, the uh, appropriate time. Okay, thank you. Um, let's go to item five.
On item five, uh, we've talked around this one, so uh, hopefully that helps. There's some context. The police department liaison should respond directly to the commission. Sacramento Police Department liaison should meet with the chair, vice chair, hopes of staff to address requests and respond directly instead of having to use OPSA as an intermediary. So uh, police response is that the city is currently following the standard practice for commissions, the liaison with city staff. And I think chief also talked a little bit more about that. Um, the police department regularly meets with the chair commissioners and ad hoc groups to discuss items, answer questions and provide additional information as needed. The police department also is given the opportunity to provide feedback during these meetings outside the normal meeting schedule. For formal requests, presentation or report backs to require commitment of staff of, or resources, the commission is using the same standardized process as other boards and the council by directing requests through the commission's assigned staff, which is OPSA. This allows for formal tracking of the requests and proper prioritization of those requests and workload management of city staff. And that conform, comports to what the audit also talked about, a, about a more formalized process. Now, uh, OPS had a comment. Um, they concur with the, uh, with the commission uh, and OPS uh, states that she, they have provided uh, the SPD representative for police commission contact information to the 2020 commission chair and vice chair for direct communication uh, with the police department reference ad hoc group discussion meetings, meeting requests and requests for police information and questions. And that OPSA would simply be copied on any written correspondence instead of um, being the intermediary. Any questions on this before discussion? Questions, members? Okay, let's move to item six, please. I'm sorry, I was too fast on the draw. Do we have somebody? No. Okay. Item six. Uh, this is police department liaison president at all commission meetings. Uh, there's a requirement that they want to require that the police uh, department have a police liaison present at all monthly meetings to respond to questions and information requests. Um, police department responds that currently the liaison is present typically at regularly scheduled meetings However, in the event that the representative cannot attend, any updates are provided to OPSA prior to the meeting and OPSA can forward requests for information to the department prior to the meeting. Additionally, the, the commission has access to the liaison outside of regularly scheduled meetings by email and phone, and there were no other staff comments. And uh, usually I attend the meetings as well, um, and I, I can tell you by practice, it's only by exception that the police department does not have a liaison there. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay. This, this seems pretty routine. Now we get to the- uh, hey, Mary, Mary. I, see, I, I do see Mario's hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Guerrero. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Jennings. I just wanted to point out, you know, I, I, once again, point out that uh, the audit really, the underlying issue with the audit was that we needed um, to make clear to all what the job responsibilities of everyone is, including, of course, uh, the commission. And so, yes, this, uh, uh, in the last year or so, we have had a, what I would describe a fantastic relationship um, with uh, then Deputy Chief Lester, now Chief Lester and the staff, and we are working extremely well. But I think it's really, really important um, in terms of many of these recommendations, even though SAC PD and OPSA, we're all doing it, is that, that the council adopt these things because we wanna set the expectation moving forward. We wanna make it clear to everyone that this is the basis for the relationship. This is how we work together. So I just wanted to stress that point that yes, in fact, uh, uh, Chief uh, Lester and her staff have been at meetings. Um, they're responsive to us, but this is just making sure that everyone is clear that this is the expectation that we all work together. So I just wanted to provide that context. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to number seven. Okay. And finally on number seven, um, and this is the commission's review of general order changes. The commission should be given authority to review and provide feedback to the police department, mayor and council before adoption of any new police department general orders or updates uh, to those uh, dealing with body worn cameras, foot pursuit, excuse me, use of force and discipline. So the comment back from the, the police department is that this is in conflict with Sacramento City Code 2.110.030, which states the commission shall advise to make recommendations to the city council regarding police policy procedures and best practices, including those related to community relations, hiring and training best practices. The commission advises the council through the recommendation process. Council can accept, reject or modify these recommendations the commission does not have the authority to provide direction to city staff. Additionally, the police department is responsible for the content and liability related to policies. The commission cannot be held responsible or accountable for policies that are put in place. Um, and then it discusses that the commission members have been active members of committees tasked with updating uh, police policies, including use of force, policy, body-worn camera policy, and foot pursuit policy through a collaborative process. The police department has adopted a number of recommendations made by the commission. Additionally, the police department uh, presents policy changes to the commission prior to approval. Uh, if they did that, it could substantially delay the process of updating policy for legislative changes, best practices, and organizational needs. And we've seen several examples of that recently of the short views on legislative requirements on things such as AB 392, 1492, and SB 16. And then we have a comment from HR, again, referring to the fact that any general orders regarding policies affecting wages, hours, or working conditions would have to be negotiated through the bargaining process. And I just ask, uh, since Chief Lester is on, if there's anything I missed in her comment that she wanted to add to that SPD response. Well, go ahead, Chief. But I, I, I do want to sort of frame this one. If I may, I'll let the Chief, of course, go first. But I, I'm wondering what the real dispute here is. Um, Chief, you want to go? Yeah, um, thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I think it, when you're reading this recommendation, it seems to make common sense. The challenge that I have with it is that Number one, it's referring to all of our SPD general orders and that it needs to be reviewed not only by the commission, but also mayor and council, um, which is a, a significant change, not only in past practice, but in our ability to implement policy. And, um, and we have a lot of policies that need to be updated. So um, as has been said before, you know, the commission does great work, um, but really the commission, um, our volunteers and our policy division is a you know, substantial um, group of men and women that work on this full time. One thing, um, if I could just add that has worked really well, when we had the use of force policy, which um, is very significant, um, we actually had a representative from the commission that sat in our meetings regarding the planning of that and gave input. Um, it was a part of that 18 month process to develop that policy and that worked very well. So I'm certainly not, um, you know, adverse to having input. I mean, clearly that's what we do all the time with the commission is take input and receive recommendations, but it is problematic if we're adding significant, you know, some additional layers to these, um, to the implementation of policy, especially yeah. because ultimately it is, you know, really my name that goes on that policy. And so there is input that is sought from not only the unions that are involved, but also for the city attorney. So I think that this would create um, such, you know, such extra levels that it could really impact our ability to, you know, be efficient and um, implement and modify policies. That's so my me, concern. Thank you. So I'm going to ask a question first of uh, Ms. Castillo-Krings, our, our chair, because I, I'm, I read this and I'm listening to this and I, I, I don't understand, I understand your concerns completely. I don't understand what this 
dispute is based on the way I'm reading the commission's recommendation. Because if it said that the commission has any kind of authority, um, binding authority over uh, the police department, um, obviously that would not be tenable for the very reasons I think, Chief, you just laid out. But I could be reading it wrong, but the way I see, the way I'm reading it is that they should be given authority to review and provide feedback. <laughs> review and provide feedback. And, and, and so if that's the case and it's not binding and we can address the issues of uh, timing and, and as you and uh, Assistant uh, City Manager Conlin described, I think these were your words or my words, maybe uh, exigent circumstances or emergency or where the legislature is moving fast. In other words, if we approve this, but said it is advisory, which is what it has to be. And secondly, that um, there can be an exception where because of an emergency or some sort of, I use the word exigent circumstance, you don't have the time to uh, to do so. We're all governed by the good faith standard, right? Um, what, what, what would be wrong with that? Um, first of all, so let me ask Ms. Castillo-Krings whether or not it is the intent of this recommendation to create some kind of binding authority for the commission to say, no, what, you got to hold off for 60 days until we uh, approve or make changes. That That isn't your intent, is it? No, that is not our intent. And one of the things, the recommendation is based on some of the discussions that we were having back in 2020. And one of the things, especially when it came, for example, to use of force, as we were looking at the legislation that was moving forward, as we saw it codified and signed into law, what we wanted to know is, at the time, the police department was working on updating their ordinance. And we wanted to be part of that conversation as part of the representation that our, our duty is to represent the voices of Sacramento. And what we want to do is have part at the have a seat at the table. Now, we also understand that there's a lot of complexities, there's labor issues, and there's legal questions that may come up. And just having a dialogue and having something that is very spelled out as to what the process is for how we engage in certain ordinances discussions, I think would be really helpful. I got to say, personally, I have been really informed by the discussions with Chief Lester when she has helped walk us through some of the questions as to what, why something is written one way and not another, and understanding some of the situations that our police department finds it's themselves in. And so I think just making sure that we're formalizing a process as to how the commission engages and provides advisory language and recommendations would be helpful. Again, understanding that we are not looking at every single ordinance or every single general order that they have because they have a lot. What we are trying no. to do is how do we actually bring the community voice and how do we make sure that we are engaging in transparency and accountability so that we can be also, we can help the police department. That's all we're trying to do. We're trying to provide advice yep. and we're trying to figure out how to collaborate more closely so the community feels that they have a representative through the commission. Thank you. So chief, if the councilman Chenier suggested this uh, to me a second ago, but if the uh, word authority was changed to opportunity that the, that the commission should be given the opportunity to review and provide feedback and with the intent the way the chair just described and that I assumed um, when reading this, would you be okay with that if there was also an exception for urgent, call it urgent circumstances? Sure. Um, and I think actually, um, to Graciela's point, we do this um, already in a certain extent, like every year, at the beginning of every year, the commission develops a number of ad hocs. And so, for example, we had the media relations policy, and I, I want to say we had three or four meetings as we developed and changed that policy. And that worked really, really well, um, because we were able to really, um, I wouldn't say limit, but focus our, our, you know, our, um, our work on what was actually important to the commission. So I guess, you know, one, my concern is that, you know, there are some legal issues here. Clearly, this is something we're already doing. But um, when, it, when we're talking about all of our policies, I think there's a lot of policies that, quite frankly, are pretty much just about managing the police department that don't really rise to the level of um, significant community concern. So 
I understand that's really what we're talking about here when we're talking about body worn cameras, um, you know, media relations. So maybe if we could just um, work within the scope that the commission um, has decided on, I'm, you know, I'm more than happy to do that, but certainly something that we're already doing. I think I'm concerned about all policies because I just don't see that being reasonable to push all policies towards the commission. Yeah, yeah. Mary, if I could please. Okay, um, go ahead, Kate. Thank you. Yeah, I, so my, I'm reading of this and Graciela, please um, correct us if we're wrong. My interpretation of this language, because yes, the headline says all, but when you read the actual text here, I believe they're only concerned with general orders around body ward cameras, but pursuit use of force and discipline. Is that correct, Graciela? At the time when the recommendation was written, that is correct, but that goes back to what Chief Lester was talking about. At the beginning of each year, we set up ad hocs that are looking at specific issues. And I think if, Chief, if we can figure out a way of actually kind of formalizing the process that we use for the, for the media relations. I think that's really what we're looking for is this exchange of perspective because as a lay person, when I'm reading an, a general order, I may not fully understand yeah. why the police department is asking for a certain thing. Um, and, and I'm just trying to figure out how we can actually formalize that process because it worked really well. And I think it okay. informed the commission and okay. it informed the police department. Okay. So just to make super sure I'm clear then. Um, it sounds like what the commission's recommendation is, is that it's general orders that pertain to the ad hoc areas that they've identified as priority. I'm seeing nods, great. Um, so that would be one uh, like clarification I want to make sure we all know is it's not every general order, it's just the ones that pertain to the things that they're working on. And that as an amendment to your feedback, Mayor, because I agree that there are going to be circumstances, edges and circumstances where something needs to happen quickly because something has happened. Um, and so I would add an additional level of guidance that I hope that if that does happen, that whatever general order changes made gets presented back to the commission, even if it's after the fact, so that they're aware of those changes that got made and can maybe provide any feedback later. Um, but don't want to hold up an urgent like bills in effect. We have to do this right now. So that would be my only addition to what you said there. Okay. Um, so I, I just heard a good suggestion of Kentucky Councilor Bensley, but the chair and the police chief, I think. Um, offline, sitting down together <laughs> and reworking this language in a way that I think comports with the intent of what the chair said in a way that would be uh, current practice in a way, just do that. And then we don't have to wordsmith this um, from the dais. I think that would be helpful. That would be my direction, but we'll hear from, from the other members of the council. Mr. City Manager, do you wanna weigh in on that? I think that's a great idea, Mayor. I think the, the key for me and what I would be supportive of is that if the word opportunity uh, was better defined to review uh, very narrowly in scope the types of policies we're talking about, there's an opportunity for them to, um, to weigh in, but not an obligation. I think if that's clear, I can support that as well. Okay, maybe they could work it out. Council Member Harris. Mayor, I, I think you dialed this one nicely. Oh, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. And, and I agree with the city manager's corroboration of that kind of language change. I think you're on the right path here and I would support your recommendation wholeheartedly. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Geta. Yeah, I, I, I concur. And, uh, you know, maybe uh, Council Member Harris is a contractor would, over, would, would agree that uh, measure twice, cut once. So the, 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 the feedback here, I think, is good. There's not enough controversy here, by the way. What a great analogy, Eric. Thank you so much. I need a little more. Come on. All right. Um, Mayor Pro Tem, I mean, Vice Mayor Ashby, sorry. See, we even have you mixed up on this. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to... You know, and I know, I know I tend to look at it through all committees and all commissions instead of just this one. It's just the way my brain works on this. But uh, I want to just remind folks that all of the committees and commissions operate under the authority of being appointed by us. So their role is to advise us. So I, I like the strategy of having the chair speak offline with the chief. But re again, I'll pick on a different committee. Animal uh, advisory is my favorite <laughs> to pick on. Um, they don't 
tell the shelter how to operate. They tell us what they think the shelter is lacking or where people are frustrated with the shelter or what services we aren't providing or where we're falling short as a city or where advocates and, you know, folks in the community are feeling frustrated and, and they make recommendations to us based on their experiences. And we choose people who are out there in that world fostering kittens and saving dogs and doing that whole thing. And that's what this committee does too. But remember that ultimately their role, so what you're really trying to figure, oh, I'm so sorry, what you're really trying to figure out for them right now is how they can best communicate with the police department and city staff so that they can have very informed advice in what they're recommending to us because they can't advise the police department they have to really submit their requests to us this is true of every committee and commission it's it's not it's uniform so i guess i would just urge that we try to remember try to come back to that base and i don't know if the city attorney wants to chime in on that at all i know mayor you understand it clearly but sometimes i think it's worth it's worth having a public discussion around how the committees and commissions get their power and authority because it really comes from the elected officials who appoint them. Yeah, certainly, uh, Vice Mayor, you're correct. That is the work that the PMP committee is doing with uh, to make sure that you have standardized the way that your advisory commissions and boards uh, report back to the council. The council takes in their advice and their recommendations and then determines and directs staff from that point, including all of its appointed officers. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor and City Attorney, Mr. Corrado. Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I'm i sorry that I keep chatting, but I wanna hopefully save us all some time from maybe seeing this one come back. Um, we actually did have a conversation um, with Chief Lester and we did amend the recommendation. So I don't know if we're looking, if, if uh, uh, Chief Lester, I don't know if you're looking at the spreadsheet that the city put forward or the write-up, the long form write-up, um, the long four write-ups write-up specifically says uh, the commission should be given the authority to review uh, and provide feedback to SAC PD mayor and council before the adoption of any new uh, SPD general order updates to these dealing to, to the follow to the ones dealing with body worn cameras foot pursuit uh, use of force and discipline and that's a reflection of the conversation that we had that we understood that we may not want to weigh in on a general order that has to do with officers being late. The, with officers having uh, being late to court or something else. So I think we did tailor this. So it might just be an issue of looking at the at the um, uh, looking at a different document. But that is absolutely what the recommendation is before the council. Very limited, and also to um, you know the reason this came up is because um, staffing changes or what have you. There were times where general orders were adopted, and the commission wouldn't even know about it, and. Um, and, and you know, again, people may be left or there was a mistake. And so we really thought about our, our role as, as a commission is to give the mayor and council advice. And so if we're not aware that a, that a policy, uh, that a general order um, changed, that's kind of problematic because that's what we're looking at. Um, secondarily, we are just, if this were to be put in place, we would simply look at a policy uh, at the front end to give advice, it's non-binding. Of course, uh, we wouldn't. The, the 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 intent here was never to to sac, tell sac to give to have the council give the commission authority to prescribe the policy. That's never been the the um, the uh, the the intent. The intent was always to look at the policy. The only question is, can we take a look at the policy a little bit at the front end um, before you you know adopted, um, as opposed to looking at the at the at the tail end, which at that point, it's a lot more work, right? And at the front end, we can collaborate on, on, on a lot and I think we can get a lot done. So I just wanted to add that context. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so I, let me, go ahead, Mr. Chief Manager, please. I, I was just saying that uh, uh, Mr. Guerrero is correct. That is what's before you, but that's not something that we can support. Uh, this, as I said earlier, this would be an opportunity to work with the commission, not an obligation. And for the reasons the vice mayor just stated, I just want to make sure that I'm clear where, where I'm at. Thank you. I, I, 
you know, there are fundamental dis dis disagreements and then there are semantics. And again, I'm not sure what is what here because <laughs> I think the idea here is um, understanding that the commission is advisory to the city council to the degree that um, there is time for the commission to be able to review general orders in these three, in these four categories and provide input, not to the police department, but to the city council who may ultimately be asked to weigh in on this, so long as it does not disrupt the uh, police department's need to act with urgency, I don't see what the conceptual problem here is. Uh, and, and I agree, Jay Schneer said, take out the word authority, say opportunity that you, and it should, by the way, it's not must, <laughs> that you should provide the opportunity to the commission to have them weigh in for the police department's benefit and for the city council's benefit. And that the council, and that the police department, uh, if they can't, uh, hear the recommendations because they have to move quickly on a 24 hour amendment. Maybe it's an inform and the chief Lester is like this. She'll pick up the phone and call the chair and say, this is what's happening. And that'll suffice, right? It, it, the intent of it is as the current chair, as Castillo Kring said, is to just state what the current common sense practice is, not to put another heavy obligation, but it's, it's, it, it, so I just think this could be, this could be written, um, uh, you know, uh, this could be written in a way that I think would make everybody comfortable. I think that I don't want to belabor the point and it's just, we're having the discussion now. I don't want to create an expectation we're not going to be able to meet and cause problems down the road. So if it's an obligation, uh, it could be problematic. If it's an opportunity, I'm good with that. That's, that's what we're talking about is changing it to an, well, that, they, again, the commission should be given the opportunity. Do you have a problem with that? The commission should be given an opportunity, not shall be, not must be. The commission should be given an opportunity. Right. And if something needs to happen without giving them that opportunity, I think letting them know of changes that happen in policy. I mean, it's not like these aren't pub public documents, yeah. right? Yeah. Is that, is, I'm good. Absolutely. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Ms. Craig and Mr. Guerrero, I think... That's good. All right. Phew. There's no number eight. Um, thank you. Let's, we have not heard from the public, of course, and I think uh, that's next. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have one hand raised, Norma Nelson. Good afternoon, Mayor and City Council. Can you all hear me okay? We can. Uh, yes, I, I do appreciate that uh, you all have uh, taken up this issue. Just want to remind you that the reason that the commission, the Police Review Commission was established was regarding police policy procedures and best practices. So um, regarding the number seven item on the discussion here, um, I think that defining the scope of what would be reviewed by the commission is okay, but it's also already been somewhat defined by limiting it to dealing with body worn cameras, foot pursuit and use of force and discipline. Um, I believe that uh, it's very important that the police review commission have an opportunity to review these policies in a uh, timely and appropriate uh, manner. And, uh, oh, I forgot to introduce who I am. Norma Nelson, I'm with the League of Women Voters, <laughs> sorry. Um, and also, um, the, the Police Review Commission is a public review process, and therefore it's, impo it's, it's important that the public be uh, apprised of what's going on with the policies that are being developed, particularly before they're implemented. And to that end, I want to also remind uh, you all, or, or request again, that um, per Council Member Valence Whaler's suggestion last year that the Lexapol contract be reviewed, that's something that be brought back as a public hearing as she had suggested, because I believe it has some impact on the policies, procedures, and best practices of the police department and for transparency and uh, opportunity for public participation. It's important that these public hearings be conducted and then also that the policies being adopted 
um, be discussed at the Police Review Commission meeting so that the public can also hear what's going on for transparency. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you for calling in. All right. And then, um, uh, Mr. Mary, one more caller. Keon Bliss will be our last speaker on this item. Okay. Keon Bliss. Yes, hi, uh, uh, Mayor and City Council. Uh, this is Keon Bliss. Uh, I'm the vice chair, uh, newly elected vice chair of uh, the Sacramento Police Community or Police Review Commission, and uh, just wanted to confer with the or concur with the previous caller um, on her view on our commission, as well as uh, lift up the comments that have come from um, uh, Commissioner Guerrero and uh, Chair and Chair Castillo Creens, um, and really just. Uh, I'm calling in just to point out, you know, this is the third time these recommendations, this just this one set of recommendations has been before you uh, for consideration. I understand that previously it was continued in order to hear the, uh, the audit report and uh, was expecting and hoping that we could actually like, you know, we would vote on these and get to the next uh, three, like three dozen or so recommendations that are still before you for consideration. Um, so my only uh, question uh, for the council and city manager's office is once this uh, is received and filed um, to actually specify a date when this will come up for review or at least a timeline uh, for when this can be like when this can be approved by because I think given that these are just 2020 recommendations and they're now 2021 recommendations and that would make that we've in the last four years alone we've only passed one recommendation uh, since the, in the entire history of the commission's re, uh, existence, I think that speaks to the like, urgency of this issue and the need for urgent action and discussion and deliberation uh, on the remaining recommendations. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, that, that raises a good question. So when, when is the next set of recommendations going to come forward for the council consideration? Mr. Conlon? You know, Mayor, I'll ask that. I think uh, we are going to absolutely look to the PNP folks to come up with a process for how these recommendations come forward as they're presented to the council. Because okay. really, what, what, I, what I would love in an ideal world is for the council to kind of narrow in on the recommendations that have been made and chunk them out into an annual work plan that we're all on the same page on what we can uh, uh, devote resources to and to address. So, you know, uh, getting back to the mid-April time frame ish I think is reasonable uh, for the process. And then I'm not sure what that looks like in terms of getting uh, that work plan before council, but uh, that would be ideal for me. Uh, or if we wanted to have the police department pick out the next seven kind of non-controversial issues that we could bring forward for the purposes of getting uh, some of these things approved, uh, I mean, I'll defer to the council on how they want to do that. Well, I, I, I do think your suggestion, uh, especially since we're going to have the PP&E uh, recommended process come back to the council next month, which is not six months from now. So that's good. So maybe let, let's maybe talk about the next agenda item for the police commission in light of those recommendations and what it is and what it is we decide to do. I think that's that's fine. Okay. Mayor, can I ask for a clarity? Because we yeah. spent this past hour and a half going through the seven recommendations. I think my my question is when are these seven items are going to come back for an actual up no, down today. vote? Oh, so oh. This, 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 this is there was a little I had, had the same confusion. It, um, even though it is noticed for um or receive and uh, information and receive and file. I'm told, Madam City Attorney, please help me here that we can uh, make a motion, a member can make a motion to provide that direction. And that's exactly what it would be. So looking for some action and get the council on record um, to state a motion, uh, I think that's appropriate. Madam City Attorney. Well, well um I think it does say provide direction. So, I mean, yeah. there's one way for all the council members to agree on what that direction should be. So 
let's just call it like a motion light. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm not trying to be facetious. It's not, uh, but it's looking for council direction very specifically says that. And so certainly the council can agree as to what direction yeah. should be given. I, I do think, look at, I mean, this is part of where we get hung up though, frankly, if we're just all going to be honest with each other is that, and this is maybe part of the process and maybe what the uh, uh, vice mayor Ashby you, you can consider in your recommendations going forward here, but I do think the council has a right and some might even argue an obligation to weigh in as a body, to provide direction as a body. That, that's what we do. And so you hear us all separately and the problem is under the system of government, you hear maybe nine different things and it's subject to a lot of interpretation. A motion, good or bad, I like being on the winning side of motions, uh, you know, um, the, the, the council, states its direction. And I think that's important. And, and Mayor, I will, I will say this. Uh, certainly the council has noticed on the agenda, the word motion is not included in your agenda description. However, there really is only one way for the council to act and that's it for it to occur in an open notice meeting. Um, and this is appropriate for the council not to take direction, uh, excuse me, to, to take this recommendation and now direct what needs to happen okay. next. That's, that's excellent. So I see, so I, uh, the floor is open for a motion here and consideration. I see Council Member Harris is up and Council Member Valenzuela and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Guetta. I think Council Member Garrett had his hand. Was he first? Okay, go, go. Councilman Harris? Councilman yeah, Harris. well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that the order matters, but look, we've discussed a lot of direction. Uh, to make a motion out of that could be rather lengthy, but certainly I would make a motion to accept the direction that we are uh, looking to revise how we do our work with commissions, a la what the vice mayor said, and your direction on item number seven, corroborated by the city manager, I, I think that that is the essence of what we've come up with here. And I think we've had a lot of concurrence from the commission as well on those two items, that we need clarity on the roles and responsibilities. And I think the direction that we've provided today does exactly that. But specifically on item seven, I think the, uh, that we need to adopt the language of should and opportunity in, in terms of that particular item as you have yeah, direction, and that is my motion. Okay, and I think the other items were yeah. okay. Go ahead, Councilmember Valenzuela. Do you want to? Yeah, I, I was going to make a much more um, specific motion, so I'll just pose it as a substitute motion. Um, so, motion is Reco One to go back to budget and audit in terms of job descriptions, right, for staffing needs. Um, Recos two, four, and five to be folded into the PMPE process that will come back to council for review. Uh, RECOs three and six are already being done. So I'd love to see that folded in. I know the commission is in the process of bringing forward new recommendations. I'd love for us to just say, yay, we agree. Commission agrees, PD agrees, we agree on the stuff that like, because there's several of those RECOs that have been made that PD has said. And so I feel like we could dispatch of those in sort of a procedural manner because they were presented to us and say, we all agree. Um, so I'd like to see that come back either through their annual report process and their new set of RECOs or at another separate item. Um, and then RECO 7, specifically, not just the language change of opportunity, but ensuring that, um, you know, that any general order changes do come back under those issue areas to the commission at some point that they are informed either before or after. Even if it's after the fact. Sure. Yes. Um, okay. So that is my slightly I, more specific. Uh, Councilmember Member Harris, no, I don't know pride of authorship. It does sound very similar to your motion, maybe with a little more specificity. Are you willing to second That's that? That's correct. And, and I, I find no problems with what Councilmember Member Valenzuela okay. has offered here. It's Maybe a better synopsis. Will you be so you'll be a second on that motion then? Yeah, I'll second. Okay, thank you. Council Member Chenier. Yeah, I, I just have a question. I'm a little bit unclear that, um, and I guess this is for the maker of the motion that we're we have a motion that refers to a process that we haven't uh, said yes on. 
part. So I'm referring part. those recommendations. So I want us to like say what we want to do with each of these recommendations. Yeah, if you could be so, specific about that rather than. Just... Oh yes, thank you. Um, refer those three recos to the PMPE committee. Um, does that make more sense in terms of what would what would make it more make more sense? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure because I, we haven't seen the recommendations from PP and E yet. I know that's so. How about we say we table recos two, four, and five pending the PMPE's recommendations on ongoing committee, or just or just what you want to do with them is fine with me. Let's just separate that from a different process that we will be hearing. Well, I'd like to adopt them. I just think that um, it's it feels um, arbitrary to say let's adopt these sort of outside of that broader context and framework that the chair's been working on through the committee. Um, because I believe they're going to be addressed through that larger process, but I obviously want to wait until you can see the larger process until you decide if those recommendations were addressed, if that makes sense. So I'm basically saying I want to table those three recos until we can hear this fuller process and decide if that That's fine. Better. I'm good with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we now we have a clear motion and a second. Councilman Harris again? Yeah, th that's all fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, let's call the roll, please. Mayor, if I may, sorry. Okay. My hand up there. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Go, go. Yep. Uh, I just want to, I, first of all, I want to thank Councilmember Valenzuela because it, in a perfect world, this whole audit and meeting would have come after the council had an opportunity to review the work of the you know, PMPE committee. And I know she's trying very hard to honor that work and it is good. And I think it will solve some of these issues or at least get us started in the right direction. So I, I greatly appreciate her, the foundation of that motion, which is honoring a lot of work that's already gone into some of these issues, but hasn't been made public yet. But I do have a question as to number seven, because I, I just wanna hear what the city manager, how he feels about that exact language that's being used here um, because I you know and I maybe I missed it but I thought I heard him say that staff wouldn't support that so well that was the first go around when I when I sort of rephrased it exactly what I meant I think he was okay with it right? I just want to hear what he yeah says. I think that if uh, we should give the commission the opportunity to take a look at these uh, updates the general orders and policies uh, whether that's before or after, but at some point, uh, but there's not an obligation to do so. That that's the piece that I wanted to make sure. Uh, I, got. Yeah, I, I don't think you have to say there's no obligation to do so because that's like sticking. It, no, it, no, it, but it, I, but it's for clarity because otherwise yeah. we're going to be back at another meeting where there's going to be the back and forth. But but the intent absolutely to get at some point the policies in front of the commission either before, during, or after. Well. I would just add one thing, which is preferably before. In other words, if it can be done before, you should do it before. If you if you can't, then you can't. Uh, but it should be before. I think the chair, I think Chair Guerrero and the chief seem to have already agreed on which topics needed to come before. Yes. And yeah. then everything else would come after. And the reason I'm right. even trying to pinpoint this a little is actually to your point, Mayor, that both the police department and the commission were very frustrated with the implementation of the LGBTQ process, even though they agreed on it because they didn't get to weigh in or be a part of it, even though both sides tried to get the other one involved. And that was a communication issue for us, which goes back to number one and others, which we'll clean up on our end in the coming weeks, as you've already stated. I just wanna make sure that uh, everybody's sort of on the same page because I was still hearing quite a few different versions, but I think uh, what I heard Councilmember Valenzuela say is okay, and it sounds like that is what uh, the city yeah. is saying is okay. Okay, I think we're all in agreement here. Um, I think let's call the roll. <laughs> uh, Mayor Pertim Gera, did you have a comment? No, I forgot to put my hand down. Sorry, thank you, that. Vice Mayor Ashby. Yes. Councilmember Lalowy? Aye. Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Valenzuela? Yes. Councilmember Chenier? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Gata? Aye. Councilmember Jennings? Yes. Councilmember Vang? Yes. And Mayor Steinberg? Yes. All right. Thank you all. It's really 
hard uh, work, important work. And um, I think we made some progress today. And we'll make further progress in the weeks ahead. And thank you again to everybody volunteering their time uh, to try to serve their community. And of course, our city team as well. Good job. Thank you. All right, members, are there council ideas and questions? Are there, is there public testimony and items not on the agenda? Uh, Mayor, I have no hands raised to make public comment for matters not on the agenda. All right. Well, if there's nothing more to come before the council, we will reconvene uh, at 5 o'clock. We are adjourned. Thank you.